Hello UTK printmakers. Uh, this video is uh, made for entirely your class, but any of you want us to learn about art of entirely copper engraving printmaking, please use this material. Entirely printmaking, um, basically 500 years of the art form. However, in essence, Engraving and mark making on the surface of this uh, metal or anything, um, the carbable, I guess, the, uh, that started uh, way before the printmaking. Uh, this illusion of this uh, form made by those lines, and there are some uh, limitation. Although, but at the same time, there's advantage as well. This is a burin. Um, from uh, Easy Lions, and I believe this is about ten dollars, nine dollars and eighty-one cents. Number eight is a good size to start from. You'll see this is square burin. It's a very solid. It doesn't flex much. Hold like that, and fit into this uh, inside of palm, and then place like so, and then approach it, and then fit into nicely, snug it, and then you don't really have to hold that tight, but make it contained. So this is the uh, sharpener jig, uh, Crocker sharpener jig. This is a little more expensive. This is about fifty-seven dollars. Uh, basically, the uh, you want to place it like this to hold that angle of the face of burin. This is a sharpening stone. This is an ultra sharp sharpening stone, uh, diamond stone. Uh, this is about the twenty dollars. Apply some water on the top. Number six hundred grit. That's the uh, things I would like to recommend you to have it. Um, some people want to sharp until twelve hundred, but it's really not necessary. So this is a image of a microscope. You can kind of see the penny, so that give you a sense that when you place that burin's face and it has to contact completely, and then try to keep this. Uh, approximately 45 degree angle it doesn't really have to be but when you place it look really carefully make sure there's no gap between that and apply the water you can kind of push the water and then that should do it and you don't have to press that hard just maintain the same angle just slightly uh, gently but just number of time and then make sure you apply the water and then so that will Rubicate, you just check it out the surface. You can kind of see the reflection, maintain that angle, it's very important. And then after that, done, uh, you have to shape the uh, sh uh, sharpening the, the side of the face and the side of the uh, burin, both sides. One part push, another part pull. And that's so you have to sharpen um, three surfaces completely. So so that's the Buren. Uh, this one is number five, I think, the smaller Buren. And uh, if you want to challenge it, smaller Buren is actually harder. Uh, number eight is a nice size to start it out with because a smaller Buren, what's going to happen is they will flex a little bit. And then sometimes you can use those flex flexibility as a sort of advantage. And then what I usually do, my practice is that. Um, kind of draw it out with a sharpie marker you can kind of see the, how thick those sharpie marker lines are and then I will sort of generally follow but when I said generally it means that uh, I do a lot of improvisation while drawing the line I don't necessarily draw straight line and I like to kind of play with that as well the how that in effect um, basically the magic of this um, illusion of making that is a density of the marks how close they're each other what direction they're going through and then uh, in a small world uh, like that it's very uh, linear but the, from the distance the slowly they become a value and then, uh, some people would like to use that um, dry point mark but I just use a sharpie marker it's just easier if I don't like it I can always erase it get rid of it uh, just using a uh, alcohol to 
remove that and then put the Sharpie marker. It's not permanent. And then sort of generally follows that. And sometimes I get lost while I'm carving it. And just sometimes just let that happen. And using Buren as a drawing tool and then start discovering, not necessarily creating the form, but um, discovering a form while I'm in the process of doing that. Um, kind of like a printer, I guess. Um, so a series of the line. Uh, carved lines are relatively easy. Uh, it's, a, it's important to, uh, to use both hands, which means uh, carving buren and as well as uh, uh, turning a copper plate towards the buren to meet that. And that's a relatively easy way to make it, the, the lines, um, carved lines to create the little form. It's kind of like uh, knitting or something. I remember my teacher told me the, about the ice skating. Uh, idea basically uh, to s creating a surface and mark making it's a it, it is a contact between the metal uh, uh, together and ice skating uh, metaphor is basically the creating a mark making with this uh, hard blade into the surface of the ice and then that's also the practice of the drawing and as long as tools is sharp it should uh, engrave relatively easily if you're skipping it go back to sharpening that's the uh, important part and a lot of people consider engraving is really hard and yes it is hard but however um, the, uh, a lot of people make mistake by not using a sharp tool and that makes it really hard and also it can be dangerous too so uh, please take time sharpening a tool and then practice on the back side of your copper plate or existing etching plates or do you have it's a very simple, you don't have to go through all this etching, uh, degreasing and grounding and smoking the plates and, and uh, all the process for the etching. Etching is fun, absolutely, the, but the uh, engraving has a very different uh, quality of line. And then sort of kind of test the decision making, I guess, and the consequence as well. In this case, the copper engraving is once you engra engrave it into it, it will be there for a long time. So it's a different approach to it. Thank you very much for watching this and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, there's some of my artwork in here. And uh, please take care of yourself, stay safe, and I uh, hope to talk to you later. All right, have a good one. Bye.